Hi there, and welcome to our short ultimate guidance segment.com. My name is Ruben, and I'm the founder of Practical Analytics. Now, this is actually something I created uh, about a year ago now, and I just went over all the different functions the segment has, uh, the different things you should know. And I'm recording this introduction in late 2018, so this is December 2018, almost 2019, uh, because a lot has changed in the segment world. Uh, they released a couple new things, uh, they become more popular, and they're a little bit more known than they were at the beginning. Uh, but I still want to give you an introduction of what the product is and how it fits into your strategy specifically. Why would you use it? It's still a very uh, common question I get. So this is the, the segment website we here in front of us. And they have, um, or they used to actually have a really nice diagram explaining how the core product of segment, which is called Connections, or it got renamed to Connections now. This used to be core product segment. And now they have two other products, Personas and Protocols, which I'll make also a video on each one um, individually. But really, a uh, segment uh, calling themselves a CDI or a CDP, a customer data platform, uh, it's really a, a central place to ingest all your data, right? Now, the, the main uh, usage of segment, uh, the core product of segment, has always been uh, this basic idea. Let's say you want to implement uh, multiple tools, or you have a you have a, a, a normal marketing stack these days, or market marketing sales stack, where you have things like, uh, let's say maybe like uh, Google Analytics. You have a bunch of pixels, like Facebook Pixel, Twitter Pixel, Ad Roll. You have maybe some user behavioral analytics tools like Mixman or Amplitude. Maybe some messaging like Intercom, and then you know there's 150 plus others. You can have things like Marketo and Active Campaign, uh, email programs, and so on. A lot of these tools these days, they now support the ability to send data to them, uh, specifically events or user data or user attributes, right? So imagine you, you want to send an event uh, for a sign-up. Someone signs up for your product, right? That event is probably relevant for Google Analytics, is relevant for all the, all the pixels, like Facebook can be a conversion. Uh, it can be a conversion for AdRoll. It's probably relevant for Intercom, so you can build audiences, you can send messages based on that event. In the past, what you had to do was you had to manually implement uh, that data collection for each tool. So you would write some code that was Google Analytics specific or Facebook Pixel specific or Intercom specific. And then if you had to make changes, if you had to add something new, you had to go all over again, right? So as, as the tech stack increases for development teams, now they have to make you know five, 10 different changes for each specific tool and they have to become familiar with what each tool requires, how they want it. But the, the actual... Uh, data process is actually very similar. It's almost identical for all the tools. Uh, but, you know, everyone has their own specific way of doing it. So Intercom has specific code that's slightly different from Google Analytics and different from Facebook Pixel and so on. So Segment is like, hey, let's actually remove all that and we'll be a layer on top of that. Right, and let me see if I can actually load this Connections product. We'll be a layer on top of that. So really, you know, uh, on top of all the tools here. So we have here tools on the side and will allow companies to collect data. So they'll be able to send us data from anywhere, whether it's the website or mobile apps or servers or anything else. They'll send it to us, will be the central uh, location, the, the central layer, and then we'll translate it for Facebook, for Google Analytics, uh, here's Slack, here's Salesforce, and so on. So they do all the translation for you in the back end. So in, uh, from a developer's perspective, they just have to write something once in the segment language, in their libraries and their SDKs, and then that can be converted to 200 plus different tools, right? So that's really the, the core usage of segments. So right away, the, some benefits you'll see, you know, you have a uh, decreased development time and any development time that you have can, can be quite efficient now because now you can add one thing, you can add this one idea, a sign up, um, a, a sign up event. And now that event will be available to anything that segment supports. So you have 250 plus tools or whatever, right? And there's probably even tools that you might not know right now, but you might be using six months from now. So the other benefit, it also makes some things a little easier. Uh, you can deploy pixels for segment. Uh, this is similar to Google Tag Manager, which there's a video on, on how they compare. But you know, if you're a marketing team, you can easily deploy new things. Um, a common thing is some companies will say, hey, we really want to try um, this uh, NPS tool. We want to try this like uh, hot jar or something like that. And now instead of waiting for someone to do it for you, you can just go in and enable it to segment. And then right away, any data that's already flowing through it in terms of events and so on, it can also be sent to, to those tools. So those are, those are the uh, some of the benefits of, of the core uh, segment product here. Right, you simplify data collection. Um, 
Now, segment doesn't have any charts. There's no visualization in segment, just to be clear. It, it's only, it only shows you data flowing through. There's some debugging things like you see here, right? This is code perspective. So this is really more geared for development teams and debugging that the data is properly flowing. Um, and then maybe marketing teams might use it to enable or set up new tools, but there is no charts. There's no visualization. So that's, that's really it. Now, in terms of downsides, pr probably the, the primary downside that the segment has is pricing. At the end of the day, if you have segment, you have to pay them and you have to pay other tools. So if you're already paying Intercom or Mixpanel or and so on, now you have to also pay segment on top of that. Typically, what I tell companies is when you work out the cost of segment on a monthly basis, annual basis, doesn't matter, and uh, work them against the cost of development time within your company, it tends to be a pretty good deal uh, just because development time is more expensive, it's more rare, uh, you typically want to make life pretty easy for your developers. Right? Some companies also build their own segment, just to be clear of that, that this is an option, right? There is other competitors, and particle, uh, treasure data, and it'll likely be even more as, as, as the, the market matures, it's still a young market. And some companies even build their own. So I've seen companies that say, hey, I get the value of this, because we don't want to be managing 10 different tools or 10 different code bases for 10 different tools. So we're just going to build our own segment. They typically call it like, you know, their own like data abstraction layer. Um, and they replicate some of the segment functionality. Now that's something that's much more better suited if you're maybe an enterprise product or a, a larger company that has the capacity in, to maintain something like this. But if you're just starting out, something like that could, could be very helpful. Something like segment could be very helpful. The, the other two things that, that we see now is protocols and personas. And I'll make a video about each one. Uh, but to give you a, a quick breakdown of how they're building upon this core idea, right? The core idea of managing data that I just mentioned. Uh, protocols is really uh, data governance. Uh, so at, at a high level for really bigger companies and even smaller, maintaining the integrity of the data becomes very important. That is, if there's an error in the event name or event properties or something was broken or something, can you manage it, clear it up, transform it, rename it, do a bunch of things. So that, that is protocol, that's what protocol says. Uh, these two products are actually enterprise uh, only solutions. So you won't see them at the, at the more freemium levels that you might see with, with the, uh, the SaaS product here. So that's data governance. And personas is actually uh, about uh, helping you build audiences. Uh, so you have all this data about your users. There are, you know, you're collecting data from all these different places, your mobile apps and websites and so on. So you have all this information about them from uh, behavioral information like events, you know, they signed up. And you also have things like uh, user attributes. You might know that they're male or that they, um, I don't know, you might have some demographic data or maybe some behavioral data about the user, right? That they're subscribed to a specific plan. So based on that, you can take all those attributes and then build audiences. Uh, and then this data flows down into things like uh, uh, Facebook and Google Analytics and so on. Uh, so actually, we'll look at this. This is an interesting product uh, for managing audience also available at the enterprise level. So once again, they're taking this core idea of managing all your data in one place and then giving you better ways to, to do things with it, right? To better manage it and then to build things like audiences so you can flow them down to uh, other tools. So it becomes a central place for managing an audience instead of doing it at the tool level, right? Instead of saying, hey, uh, this has to be done in 10 different tools. We'll do it once at the top and then we'll flow it down. Okay. And that's, that's really it. Uh, last thing I just want to show you here is actually all the integrations, the core, you know, the core segment product. Um, when I first recorded this course, I, I believe they have about, about 200. Uh, they're probably close to 300 now. So they have done a lot of uh, integrations here. So you can see all the possible categories, you know, um, all the possible categories here. Uh, you see a lot of marketing tool stacks, right? Email marketing. It's likely that pretty much the majority of the tools that you might be using will be here. Uh, there's still, of course, some tools that are maybe a little bit more obscure that haven't been supported, but they're also adding things at a really fast pace. Uh, so it, it's uh, we tend to see quite a thing, quite, quite a few tools. And and the other thing for companies too is if when companies are choosing tools, so they might be choosing an email marketing tool and they're debating between one or the other. Um, if they do choose segment, sometimes we'll even say, hey, you know we recommend that you stick with whatever they support because it'll make your life much easier in terms of flowing data to it, managing and so on. And this is not a, such a restrictive option since you know here we have, uh, you know, it looks like about 20, 30 email marketing tools to select from. So we're not, we're not saying, hey, you're, you're limited to only two, you have 30 plus options which are really popular, 
uh, you're probably better off sticking to one of those 30 options, right? And you see some some of the ones that are just starting to release, like the ones that are in beta, right? Uh, those are new ones that are trying out. So so there is quite a bit of support in terms of where you can send data. And, and that's it. So that's that's what segment is, how it fits into your strategy, uh, specifically how it can help you simplify your development time and a few other things, and some of the new products they, they released over the past uh, few months. Perfect. I'll see you in the next video.